For seven years, many of us have been waiting for a follow-up to an all-time classic, The Last of Us. Part 2 is not what I expected, but so much of this game has greatness. The art direction, actor performances, animation, score, and a willingness to take risks with such a big budget. I commend this. However, I found the story hard to digest the first time playing. It's just so bleak. Second time around, I'm looking forward to taking it slow. Picking up on details I missed and trying new things with the sublime combat. While an easy platinum, I find this an emotionally difficult game to play. Part 2 makes me uncomfortable. I'm still not sure if I want to do a second playthrough so soon after finishing it the first time. But here we are. Joel, get up. Hi there, and welcome to Platinum Journey, where I document the highs and lows of getting a Platinum Trophy in some brilliant games. Today's episode is huge! <laughs> Let's look at the trophies. I already have 7 of the 10 bronze, 5 of the 8 silver, and 1 of the 7 gold trophies. The remaining bronze trophies are for crafting every item, collectibles, and putting a hat on my companion. The silver trophies are for fully upgrading a weapon, visiting every location in downtown Seattle, and unlocking every safe. What have you got for me? The gold trophies are for finding all workbenches, more collectibles, fully upgrading every weapon, and learning all player upgrades. Pretty simple trophy list. However, Given the immense accessibility options, I think the developers wanted everyone to not only be able to play the game, but also platinum it. I'm okay with this. They also recently released a patch adding Grounded Mode and Permadeath, each with their own trophy for those seeking an immense challenge. As for my plan of action, I'll be collecting everything in sight and saving one of the happier moments in the game for last. Holy shit, Joel. We're here. Oh my god, it is a dinosaur! So, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, and join me on my platinum journey for The Last of Us, part two. I told her they just ran some tests. I told her. Hey. Her immunity meant nothing. Can't say I'm excited about it. Not the first couple of hours anyway, because I know that big moment is coming. I just want to dive in, blaze through the first two hours, and then get to Seattle day one with Dina and Ellie and things would be a bit nicer, because... Oh. oh, it's all so sad. Look at him in all his glory. What a magnificent specimen, huh? I'm not galloping. I'm gonna enjoy these last few minutes with him. Soak it all in. Like that? Ah, I just want to run around as Joel. Ah, oh, boy. It's a serene jaunt to Jackson before my time playing as Joel comes to an end. Ah, oh, this is it. The guitar on Joel's back is a gift for Ellie, who is settling in rather well to her new life in Jackson. No, 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 no. I don't know the first thing I about this. I promise that I teach you how to play. You did. Cut to four years later and time for a patrol with Dina, whom Ellie has a huge crush on. Hey, hey. Open it up! You all know the drill. Run your routes, mark your logbooks, clear any infected you see. If you run into anything you can't handle, come back. Be smart about it. 
Get going. A small detail I didn't take much note of the first time around. Ellie's plans for later. What are you doing tonight? Uh, I was thinking of inviting Joel to watch a movie. Oh, you guys good? Yeah. Unfortunately, movie night is cancelled. Switching to Abby in grave trouble. Luckily, she is saved by the Miller brothers. We're gonna have to run! There's too many of them! I'll cover you! Get going! Come on, this way! Thrilling sequence and so good seeing Joel and Tommy in action together. Hey, you got a gun? Yeah. Well, I hope you're a good shot. Keep up with us. <laughs> Hey, I'm Tommy. That's Joel. What's your name? See the look Abby gave Joel? I'm Tommy. That's Joel. What's your name? Abby. She's in disbelief. The person she's been searching for, for four years is right there. While the trio is running for their lives, Ellie and Dina are getting better acquainted. Jesse comes barging in with word that Tommy and Joel are missing. What do you mean? Turns out Abby's offer of safety and shelter was a trap. Felt like, like you heard of us or something. Because they have. By the time Ellie finds them, it is too late. Get her down! Get off me! I don't want to watch it. Please stop! Please don't shoot. Joel, please get up. No! No! Still sucks. What are you doing? Killing time. Well, what am I supposed to do? I am sure you will figure that out. Your watch is broken. Tommy sets out to find those responsible. Ellie and Dina close behind. Okay. Over the sadness. Let's move past it. Joel is indeed gone. Just Ellie and Dina roaming around Seattle, okay? Seattle day one is lush, colourful and gorgeous. A well-needed change of tone. This is a good part of the game. I like it. I like for them to have one open world-ish section in the game. It's pretty cool. Just nice and tranquil. A trophy I'm missing is for visiting every location in downtown Seattle. Vehicle convoy, courthouse, music shop, plenty more, including some ruins. Tracking Tommy and the group who killed Joel, called Wolves, leads Ellie and Dina to a TV station. This was one of my favourite sections of the game when I played it the first time. It's sort of eerie. <laughs> At any moment, stuff's about to go down. Oh, it's great. Who the fuck did this? I don't know. But it's a message. Now, I do want to try something. They're gonna come in there. If I place... See what that does? 
And last time I kind of hunkered over here and just waited it out. That would mean they could come in through. Okay, <laughs> let's see what that does. Ellie and Dina find a member of the wolves, Leah. Dina. That's her. That's the one who killed him. Six, this is two. Do you copy? Support unit India en route to the TV station. Repeat. Support Shit. unit India en route. Yeah, we Over. should get going. Here we go. Time to blast my way out and see if the trap mines worked. Shit. Get down. Shoot. Completely misjudge which way they come in. How are we getting out of here? Someone get to the radio and call this in now. Oh, fuck! Ah! Over there! Alright. Now let's see. Where some trap mines go off. So we got one on all three doors. Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still standing. I don't think so. That's pretty cool. So they come through there, and I oh, I could have put a load. And I put mine over here. If I plan on doing a survivor playthrough, I'll know. Just put one there. They all, do they all come through there? Two. Cool. You run for it? Oh, shit. We got them. After escaping, Dina and Ellie seek refuge in an abandoned theatre. But Dina is a little worse for wear. Sluggish and in pain. I think I'm pregnant. <laughs> what? I'm gonna make sure this place is secure. You just rest. My favorite bit of the whole game. This storm sound like so. Oh, I suck. Just need to build up your calluses, that's all. It comes at just the right moment as well. Things are bleak in the present. To go back to, I think, the peak of their relationship. Joel is at his softest. Well, he's just a great big softy at this point. And Ellie is still the childlike wonder, the innocence, trusts Joel. She's kind of, you know, she's pushed, pushed aside the question she asked him about what happened at the hospital and just accepting it and just enjoying being around each other. So sweet. Shit, 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 shit. I think I just missed a collectible. Oh, this is gonna be. Of all the chapters to restart, this one's pretty good. That's the one I missed. <laughs> this bit is great. I can creep. Just when it couldn't get any better. You've seen dinosaurs and now witness space. <gasps> Did you know this was here? Oh, you don't like it. Um, we can head back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shut up. 
Joel even found a tape of the Apollo 11 rocket launch. Happy birthday, kiddo. Best birthday gifts ever. Amazing. I do okay. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, kiddo. Uh, gotta go back. <laughs> Stay in the past. Hey. How hot do I look right now? Pretty hot. Listening to the wolves as radio signals points Ellie in the direction of Tommy. Dina may be staying behind, but a part of her is coming with Ellie for good luck. Jessie catches up to Ellie and the two have a daring escape. Sopping wet, failing to find Tommy, Ellie and Jessie regroup at the theatre with Dina. Flashback number two from a couple of years ago. Ellie and Joel go in search of new strings for Ellie's guitar. On me, kiddo. Just like old times, huh? No point sprinting in this section, just savour it. Joel and Ellie back together. Well, hello. Ready. Joel, fucking savage. Oh, shit. It was too close. Sure, but we fucking did it. <laughs> yeah, we sure did. Unfortunately, they find two former people from Jackson who met yet another tragic end. Routine for this world. Ellie can't hold it in. She feels compelled to confront Joel about what happened at the hospital. Why did you pull me out of there while I was still unconscious? Because I let them run their tests. And when I saw that they were useless, I got us out of there. How do you know they were useless? Maybe if you, you just uh, would have given them more time, they could have figured something uh, out. There was no cure. Is there something else you'd like to rehash? Just eating away at her, isn't it? What happened? <sighs> Unable to accept Joel's explanation, Ellie goes to the hospital herself. Tell me what happened here. If you lie to me one more time, I'm gone. Just say it. Joel. Making a vaccine. Would have killed you. So I stopped them. Don't you fucking touch me! I'll go back. 
but we're done. Oh, can we all just get along? I hate seeing Ellie and Joe like this. Back to present day, still in search of Abby and Tommy. I find my final workbench. Finally tracked Abby to the aquarium, or at least she was here only a few hours ago. Instead, Ellie finds Mel and Owen. This is Ellie's attempt at being Joel, using the same trick he did. Point to where she is on this map, and then you... It better fucking match up. Okay. What are you doing? She's probably dead anyway. It is not worth Stop. it. Stop! We can talk Back about it. Back the fuck up! He can see where she's going to point. It won't work. Point to where she is. Fucking point! After a struggle, both Owen and Mel are killed. To make it worse, Mel was pregnant. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey. It's all right. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Now, by all means, leave behind the map with your location. <laughs> so, guess who finds them? All my friends. We let you both live. And you wasted it. Dad! All right, Abby. I don't like you. I understand you and I sympathize with you, but the way you killed Joel, the torturing, and you were this close to slitting Dina's throat after discovering she was pregnant. <sighs> Even though Abby thought Ellie killed Mel on purpose, knowing she was pregnant. That is Abby's perspective. But Ellie didn't know Mel was pregnant. I, as the omnipotent player, am aware of this. Therefore, Abby willing to kill a pregnant Dina is unforgivable for me. Second time round, maybe I'll mellow out in her. A big reason to sympathise with Abby is that her father was going to make the vaccine. The very doctor Joel killed to save Ellie. Abby. No! Abby, don't look. Dad! Dad! No! No! Now we go back to Seattle day one. Abby. <gasps> oh. Hey, see. Alice gets shotgun. Mel's pregnant. She could use the fresh air. Why is the pregnant lady coming? <laughs> she, she's a liability to herself. She's a liability to the unborn child. She's a liability to everyone around her. Dumb. Have you been sleeping these days? Not great. Do you want me to get you something from the pharmacy? Or? Nah, I'm, I'm good. It's not a big deal. No, it's, it's fine. I'm just going to wear myself out. I've been picking up a few extra assignments. So Abby's finding it difficult to sleep since Jackson. And what she did to Joel. It was a twinge of... Maybe not remorse, but... She doesn't feel satisfied. She did it. Four years hunting down Joel. Beefing up. Killed him. But... While playing as Abby, I unlock the final safe, find a strange yet familiar relic, what is this? put those muscles to use, and go in search of medical supplies for Yara with her brother, Lev. This is a good part of the game. The relation between Abby and Lev is... Apart from Ellie and Dina, well, I like both of those relations. I like Ellie and Dina because of the, like it's Ellie and she's got their first real girlfriend and there's a deep love and 
Dean is quite supportive of her and it's really sweet. Uh, and then Abby and Lev, it's complete polar opposites, warring camps. It's, you know, getting to know each other and realizing, okay, they're not that bad and understanding each other and where they're coming from. It's kind of nice. These bridges are really gonna get us over the rapids? Yeah. All of them? Yes. I'm not lying. Okay. So you're gonna tell me the real reason why they're after you now? I did. They want to kill a little boy because he shaved his head. I wasn't allowed. It's a rule. I broke it. Jeez. So why'd you do it? I don't know. Pretty punk rock of you. Punk rock? I get the impression you don't follow most rules. Hmm. I guess so. Lev waits outside while Abby descends into the basement of the hospital. Ground zero for the fungal infection which has ravaged this world. Oh boy, things are about to get rough. What the fuck? Jesus. Okay, this is a lot. So cool. Great level from start to finish. Could you imagine getting a patient at your hospital and then this is what becomes them? So what has been festering down here all these years? Oh, don't panic. Get the shit and get out of here. Oh shoot, is this the fight? Bingo. Oh, I don't feel ready. Craziest creature in the whole game. Yes. That thing is ferocious. Medical supplies in hand, Abby and Lev return to Yara just in time for a life-saving amputation. I'm enjoying the game more on this second playthrough than the first because all this Abby stuff and the kids and Mel and Owen, I just wanted to get through it and get back to that moment with Abby having the gun on Ellie and seeing what happens. It was like, can we just get going i want to see you left me on a cliffhanger what's all this padding let's get back to it but now knowing how the story unfolds i can sort of take my time and appreciate the gameplay the damn pretty everything is uh the story on abby's side and getting to know those characters uh the unfortunate trauma she goes through but yeah i think i'm enjoying it more on my second playthrough than my first also a nice detail Throughout the game, Abby has been having nightmares about her murdered dad. Even after killing Joel, she still can't sleep. Only by saving Yara and Lev do the nightmares stop. She no longer jolts awake. Lev! Get back here! Lev! What's he doing? He's going after her. After who? His mom. She's gonna kill him, Abby. We'll head him off. We'll grab a boat from the marine. At the island, Yara and Abby find Lev distraught after killing his mother in self-defense. 
They all try to escape, but Yara is killed. Love, we need to move. She's gone. Oh my god, she's gone. Love, come on. Those were your fucking people. Hey, you're my people. Now Abby and Lev must navigate a war zone to get to the docks and find a boat. Oh god! Haven! Bloody hell. Such a great, great level. Hang on! Abby! Who the fuck? Unfortunately, what's waiting for them at the aquarium is quite tragic. Which leads us back to this. We let you both live. And you wasted it. What? Get off of her! Come on. I don't want to fight Ellie. See, at least I know Ellie doesn't die here, so it's okay. Cool. That's the end of Abby's story. Let's get back to Ellie. Yeah, don't go for a gun, Dina. Stop! Stop! She had nothing to do with this. She's pregnant. Good. Abby! All the goodwill, Abby. All the goodwill. Gone. If Lev wasn't there, he would have slit Dina's throat. Starting to come around to you, Abby. Starting to come around to you. Don't ever let me see you again. Come on. You got the life you always wanted, Ellie. The nightmares won't stop. It's just sad. Oh, is that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. Ooh, look at those moves. These moves? Yeah. Still unable to sleep, still suffering from PTSD, still seeing the horrific image of Joel before he dies. Ellie, it's okay, you're home. You're home. Ellie leaves her idyllic life with Dina to once again hunt down Abby and hopefully find closure. However, Abby and Lev are captured and getting to them won't be easy. Feels really good playing as Ellie again. Nice and nimble. Coming to the end, folks. Coming to the end. There was this way. At this point, my first time around, I'm thinking the Abbey that killed Joel, the Abbey that I don't like, the Abbey that was going to slit the throat of Dina, that Abbey is gone. That Abbey doesn't exist anymore. Come on, Ellie, just take, 
take the boat. Go. This is almost a kind of like a, a, a disconnect between me and Ellie where it's like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this to yourself? I feel like Joel almost like, come on kiddo. You know better. And she could kill Abby. Take out the gun, blast away. She wants to fight. I'm not gonna fight you. Yes, you will. Ellie. Ellie, Ellie. The ensuing fight is even more brutal than the one in the theatre. Ellie gets the upper hands, and right before she drowns Abby, a flash of Joel. However, a happy Joel. A warm Joel. Picking at his guitar sitting on the porch. The Joel whom Ellie loves and misses. This is the first time Ellie's PTSD flashbacks show Joel not as a bloody and beaten mess. Go. Let's take him. Ellie returns to an empty farmhouse. tries to play her guitar but can't due to her missing fingers. So, the final scene with Joel and Ellie. This scene, for me, recontextualizes the whole game. She just got to the point where she could try and forgive him and then she never got to. And that eats away at her. I think it's a story... Not about pure revenge, but sadness and guilt and wondering what could have been. What could have been. Joel was even accepting of Ellie and her new girlfriend and how Dean would be lucky to have Ellie. It's like they could have had... And they were planning a movie night. They were planning a movie night. If somehow the Lord gave me a second chance at that moment, I would do it all over again. I don't think I can ever forgive you for that. But I would like to try. This broke me my first time around. I like that. See you around, Joel. I'll see you around. Yep. <clears throat> So I like to believe she went back to Jackson, met Dina, made amends. Dina went, I left all your stuff in the farm. You can go look for them if you want. Went, reminisced, and is now moving on and returning to Jackson to be with Dean and the kid. That's the way I like to interpret it anyway. So there's one final thing to do. I want to end on a happy note. A very happy note. Strong. Does it? Yeah. Oh shit. I'm gonna start guessing. Is it a dinosaur? Stop trying to guess. I ain't telling you. I'm all happy again. <laughs>
Holy shit, Joel. We're here. Oh my god, it is a dinosaur! Grab the hat. Here we go. <laughs> Joel, look! That is a hat on a dinosaur. It's called a hatosaur. Hey, Joel. Ellie. Don't you dare take it off. My birthday, my rules. <laughs> Here's to you, Joel. One of the greatest characters in gaming history. He's still doing up. It's late. Here. What's this? Kept complaining about your broken watch. So I figured, you know. You like it? Stop right there! Smuggling her? The watch is broken. What are we doing here? This is not us. Guess what? We're shitty people, Joel. It's been that way for a long time. No, we are survivors. This is our chance. It is over, Tess! Holy shit. She's infected. Um, about Tess. You don't bring up Tess. Ever. Listen to me. You make every shot count. Not her, you know. You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. We don't have to do this. After all we've been through. It can't be for nothing. Come on, baby girl. I struggled for a long time with surviving. What the hell are you thinking? Running off in the middle of the night like that. Joel. I was supposed to die in that hospital. My life would have fucking mattered. I don't think I can ever forgive you for that. But I would like to try. <laughs> <laughs>